All right, everyone, you've asked for it. Here it is. My most frequently asked question typically comes in the form of my child is uh, not yet five years old. What kind of things can we do at home to make a difference? And this question comes typically in the form of a parent who's either noticing that their child might be having some differences in how they're breathing, either mouth breathing or snoring, or some differences um, noted in how they're growing. So maybe sometimes I hear noticing that the teeth are crowded or noticing kind of that the, the chin appears like it's tucked back. It doesn't seem like it's growing quite how it needs to. So the reason for the kind of age subdivision is that once someone starts looking for help, a lot of times what you find as a parent is that myofunctional therapy is one of the first courses of recommendation for any sort of um, airway or growth anomalies happening in children. But myofunctional therapy often doesn't start until around age four on the basis that certain exercises are required, the child has to be able to comply with doing certain exercises at home in order to have the program be successful. So here it is, uh, just my generalized starter recommendation for your child is, is not yet eligible to do a myofunctional therapy conventionally. So what else can you do? My first recommendation is to consider some of the changes you can make at home. That might include nasal hygiene. Uh, I have a whole separate YouTube video on nasal hygiene, so please refer to that. But the general idea with that is that if the nose is blocked, um, if we have a stuffy nose, then that can be part of the reason why mouth breathing becomes a habit. And um, so there are different saline rinses or different options that can be used at home to just kind of squirt in the nose at night and help to make sure that that is not the reason why we're seeing some of the mouth breathing or other patterns taking place. Also other changes at home, that might be sleep hygiene. There are professionals that help coach uh, ideas for sleep, um, making sure you know it's a dark, cool room, get a, a, the humidity level right, different things like that. Um, also, there are just some, some teething toys that, that as a child is growing up, that they might be able to benefit from certain teething toys and, and things of that nature. So making sure, and even, even what tools are being used to feed your child. There are feeding therapists that are very helpful that have lots of recommendations. Um, so making sure that kind of at home, what you can control that you're educated in, in what kind of changes you can make at home. The second thing to consider is some sort of myofunctional appliance. So even though they may not be able, your child may not be able to comply with a whole program, sometimes there are little appliances that they wear in their mouth, um, depending on the brand, either for a period of time during the day or overnight. And these are kind of more able to make changes to how the child will have to practice to be able to get the lips closed around the appliance. So trying to build the pattern of nose breathing versus mouth breathing, and then also trying to get a better balance between the forces applied by the tongue, the lips, the cheek. And so uh, some of the common brands that you might hear for that are uh, Myo Munchie, Healthy Start, Myo Brace, so those are different directions that could be helpful at home as well. Then rather than looking for a myofunctional therapist, which we've talked about before, uh, at an earlier age, it may be an option to explore something called oral motor therapy. This, instead of requiring kind of the at-home component of the compliance, oral motor therapy is more kind of play-based exercises that are done uh, together with the therapist, often in their office, sometimes in your home, depending on what's available near you. And um, that is one great way to start to be able to see some changes and, and get some retraining that way. 
And it might be the, the professional who provides that might be an oral motor therapist, in some cases might be called a pediatric occupational therapist. So checking on who is available near you and who might be able to help. Then there are some early myo programs um, that are virtual. So these may not be your conventional myofunctional therapy that's kind of customized for a child and exercises that they do over a longer period of time. This might be more of a short burst of an education uh, situation for the parents, or it might be kind of a short burst of um, a series of classes that will give you some, you know, some sort of exercise that you can be doing with your child to get some functional change. So this is, there are a few of those programs out there. I will include a link to some of those programs below. And then lastly, check with your local providers. So uh, recently I was listening to Hallie Bulkin's Untethered podcast with my former coworker, Dr. Courtney Donko, and I really liked how she phrased this. In terms of when she was asked what age she would start with, um, start uh, treating patients, uh, she said from a dentist's perspective, there are three things that she's considering. One is dental development, so how far along, you know, everyone's teeth erupt at slightly before or after a certain age, and there's a certain amount of dental eruption where the teeth have to be in the right position if you're going to consider any sort of appliance therapy in that regard. And then other things that she mentioned are cooperation. That would apply for dental therapies or any sort of alternative therapies, um, like the what we talked about with the oral motor therapy or uh, myofunctional therapy, um, the ability to comply with the exercises. So she pointed out sometimes she has a two-year-old who hops up in her chair and behaves incredibly well. And alternatively, other times there are six-year-olds who maybe aren't quite ready to comply with all of the exercises. So checking with you know, whether it's a dentist or a myofunctional therapist, seeing having that consultation, seeing how the child behaves and, and if they're ready for it. And then lastly, she had also mentioned, what is the need? So, you know, what is the health situation that we're dealing with? And, and if the need is, is really great, then again, you know, can we find some sort of starting point? It might not be a full myofunctional therapy program, um, but maybe there's some sort of advice that can be given. So, don't hesitate to check with your local providers. If you do need help connecting with local providers, that is one of the services that I offer is to connect with you as a parent, find out what kind of um, issues or experiences you've been having with your own family, and then I can help determine what kind of provider might be needed and look in your neighborhood and your area to find a qualified professional to, to be sort of the, either the starting point or the quarterback of your child's care team moving forward. So let me know if you have any questions. Don't hesitate to reach out. I hope that you find this video to be helpful. Thank you.